We sweat and toil to reach this moment. The Ancient Ones lap at my sweat now. That war sweat the Roman gods hate so much, we long for. Discard all that. A good feast with fresh battle milk on your brows is not something you will ever taste again. Choke on my bones.
It is enough to make one blind. We are blind of now. Lanius was our only king. He saw straight and fought alongside Arturius. We have been blind ever since. No sunlight reaches where you are going. May you bathe in serpent skins. Your name, Frown Horde. Quick the dead, whatever it may be, is stained forever. My name is Horsa. I'll have silver in the mouth of my home. Please say that it is spent well and frivolously. <laughs>
offer betrayed us all, Indira. Now we crawl about for the scraps. Whatever crumbs you leave behind after your raids. You wish you were a raider? A dringer? Yes. Farbel, Salt Cloven. the trolls take you. I have seen a crown on a cleaning basin. There it was. I stole it, ran with it, hid it. Now maggots feast on it. I am certain. Let them rule old Albion.
these old worlds, I used to lie down and pray that the leaves would cover me. That I could drag them over me like a blanket and join Chernunos in a bed of leaves. Took me in, stranger, with a song. The sound of Odin stomping on your bones is the only song you'll hear. the true gods, the old ones. To be killed by you holds honor. Killing holds all glory.
what is here to strike hardest! This is a mere moment. No one will remember it. No one. Not your name, nor mine. It all ends up the same. Regret torments you. My only regret is losing to whatever you are. You reek of fading glory.
소리야. St. Chad die with his axe in his hand. St. Chad will be revered for avoiding the axe. I wish I had done so myself, and not taken a path full of violent honor. The old gods will fade from our sight in time. God forgive me for I have sinned. <laughs>
Ilyalaus, now you die. My... My sword is lost. Floating down a creek. I shall follow... Till I dance again. Or drown. And the families who fell by the Otter's command? Were they not worthy of love? You are a Dane. How can you speak of the value of a life? All are ranked as less than the axe to you. Not true. I see honor in many people. Many places. You have proved here that your compassion has a hard and brutal limit. <laughs>
these hidden ones, is that who you slave for? I slave for none. I'm scrubbing England clean of its filth for the safety of my people. Ah, uh, listen. Do you hear? The excuses of a mind enslaved. <laughs> I sought pleasure with the silver I received from the Order. I shared it too, with many in need. Don't be blinded by the gleam of your bloodlust. Shared silver always comes at a cost. What of it? I forged good from what you call evil. Lives were improved. Lives worth more than the silver that paid for them. I do not regret the lives lost for the charity gained. Suspected my heresy. I kept secrets as I gathered believers. I appeared so pious my eyes bled for him. But I've never felt as much love for his god. Not like I do the old gods. The true gods. Our ancient creators. Your life was a lie, you mean. You threw your honor into the ocean. When I told the Archbishop my true belief, he was horrified. So I silenced him. That silence comes for you now.
The first man I killed for my order, I cried and wept after trying to hold back the tears. But I told myself, I am merely acting upon a foretold destiny, navigating the whim of greater gods. My actions are simply pebbles. Pebbles that wash away in the surf as harmless as dust. Pebbles were once bedrock. As for you. I was building a boat to carry my family to safety one day. And what of the orphans you left behind? Do they get a boat? A brigade of bastards. They are the only ones left ruling England. My people were of the Wiccan Kingdom. Now we are ruled by Christ-beaten bastards. I serve the young Athelred. He will rise one day. He is no Elfred, from what I hear. I lie to everyone, and they will never know. They will tell stories of me as a good man who served his lord. Your Huga walks with a new beast.
wish my life had been a carnival of drinking ale and pissing. It could have been, I'm sure. No, we have not reached such a point. I used the order to live a life of ale drinking, but the price of my ale was murder. Sad, really. You won. I can see defeat. When Scops mention me, they will sing of my conquests. Cowards do not get sagas. I am no coward. In a long lost battle for Wessex, I was the victor. The Scot could speak of that time. Focus on my lost honor. No, I'll leave your reputation as it is. Here, in the blood blackened mud. to get on the other side. I would not let good food go to waste. I would let my children starve. A serpent's gift will always end in malice. Sweet from evil remains sweet, even if it crumbles quickly in their hands. Everyone he was Christian. He was not. He was one of us. He only wanted the silver and the swords for his men of Mercia. 
And you have kept his tradition going. Without flinching. Without hesitating. Offa would be proud of me. You must have seen 100 summers, old man. It feels thus. We must all turn to the Order. It keeps people well placed. It is not truth, but true power. You desecrate the very purpose of life. No, no, no. I place power on power. The great becomes greater. You will see. Rest easy, Reeve. Your time has come. Yes. Now I will be judged at the Witten of the Gods. To Helheim with you. Aye. Even Helheim needs a Reeve. time. <laughs> Eivor, did Basim contact you in Norway? He said he would be joining you. Yet here you are, and I have no word from him. Hytham, this will be hard to hear, but Basim attacked us in Norway. Vengeance for some transgression of ours imagined or real. You mean... You mean you slew him yourself? Sigurd and I, together. I know this comes as a... I do not understand. Why would he do such a thing? He loved Sigurd, he loved you. I do not understand it myself. Perhaps one day we can speak about this with more clarity. But for now, I am deeply sorry. Keep this. It serves your cause better than it does my pocket. One more gone. The world is brighter for it. As a ah! Eivor, there you are. I have something for you. A message. Quite strange. Something for me? What is it? A letter, requesting your presence in the southwest, a village called Athelny. Nothing strange about a summons for me, is there? It is not the recipient I find strange. It is the sender. The letter is signed, a poor fellow soldier of Christ. Ah, our mysterious partner. For a short time, I hoped it might be Bassam feeding us the names of these targets. 
He seemed the most likely man, for a time. Only one way to discover the truth. Thank you, Hytham. I will take care of this. Alvis, I am the superior wordsmith. Admit to a falsehood? I would sooner square a circle. Yes, hello. I, I do not mean to intrude, but I am looking for someone. And who would that be, then? I... I do not know exactly. Well, that would be why you ain't found him. But you're free to pass the time just here, if you like. Thank you. Soul cakes, love. Do you know soul cakes? I do, I enjoy them. They're small things, size of a lumpy fist, so they'll bake fast. Keep your eyes sharp. And the butter, do I baste them? No need, love. We leave the butter for meal time. I look forward to it. Right then, I'll leave you to this. If you need me, I'll be doing the washing up next door. Quite a step down from your former work, Lord. As their guest, I volunteer to help with the daily chores. They offer me a bed, I tend the cakes. Do they not feel strange giving orders to their king? Or do they know? That knowledge would benefit no one. I read your message. You went through a great deal of trouble to obscure yourself as this poor soldier of Christ. As I remember, you even sent yourself one of these letters in Winchester. A clever touch. The Order wanted me dead. I had to be careful. You said you knew nothing about the Order then. Pled ignorance. But you knew everything. Their names. Their schemes. Would you join me for a walk? You look well, Eivor. I am. The wars have ended. And my settlement thrives. The wars have not ended. You have simply stopped fighting. But men are brewing plots in mead halls and bedrooms. You will see. And how are you, Alfred? Getting used to the idea of being unremarkable? I am well. Better than I expected. In this exile, I have found a somewhat nourishing peace. Each morning, I am awakened by the sun and growling cormorants. I bathe in the chilly water of the marsh. I eat from shrubs and drink from buckets. It is a good life. Simple. Blessed. I've never been so far west. I find it quite peaceful here. Calming. I have traveled a long way to hear one name, Alfred. Who is the Order's Grand Magister? Tell your shadowy friends that England is swept clean. Your work is done. You? Grand Magister was not a title I desired. It passed to me on the death of my brother. From my father before him. Defilers of God's majesty and grandeur. I was their master. And I loathed them. With Goodwin, I set a plan in motion to destroy the Order from within. But my troubles with the Danes delayed that plan. But your trouble with this Dane was what led to their demise. You are Norse, are you not? You have a good year. 
I owe you my thanks, Abel. For that, I give you this. The key to my study. That you may better understand the good you have done. With the order all but destroyed, you have made room for a greater idea. One to take its place. A universal divine order, inspired by God for the betterment of man. With a poor fellow soldier at its head. You have saved England. Whether or not that was your intent. Now let England save you. England is no more, Lord. You are the last of her kings. And yet you have no kingdom. Look around you. God's works are wondrous. They cannot be ignored. Nor resisted. In time, all those who accept God will flourish. And all those who defy him will fall away. Should you remain in England, you too will one day be her subject. Oh, bloody crumbs! The cakes are burned! Where is that man? Young man, where have you gone? Damn. That may have earned me a night of washing linens. I do not know if we shall meet again, Eivor. God willing, we will. As one lord to another, perhaps. I'm coming, my lady. I'm here. Alfred gave me a key to a market study somewhere in Winchester. Kia!
Secrets as he kept hidden away. Rantings and ravings not unlike full case delusions. Is there more to all this than I understand? last of the Order's sigils. You will find King Alfred's among them. King Alfred? Did our poor fellow soldier lead you to his hiding place? He did, for they were one and the same. Our poor fellow soldier of Christ was the Grand Magister of the Order of the Ancients. He turned on his own order. Fascinating. Not turned so much as trampled. His devotion to Christ and what he calls a universal order set him against them from the start. With all sincerity, he loathed the title and the duty he had inherited, and wished them destroyed. Wonderful. With his abdication, the last stronghold of the Order has been dismantled. All that remain are scraps here and there, and you, Eivor. Now that you have seen our enemy, and you understand our cause, I wonder if you would join us. Become a hidden one. Was this your ultimate goal, Hytham? A trial by fire? It is a kind offer, but I do not believe we fight for quite the same cause. Your creed demands that you keep your triumphs hidden. I prefer my glory to be in plain view for all to see. If I taught you our creed, if you spent time with it, it could open your mind to another view. Another view is always welcome, but to live without celebrating one's glory and honor and achievements is not a life for me. But know this. I would give my life in a moment for those I love and who love me in return. All here, including you, my friend. 
I understand you well, Eivor. Very well indeed. Hytham, I have the Codex pages you asked for. Six in total. Ah, wonderful. We have so little writing from the original Hidden Ones. This will grow our understanding immeasurably. These documents may have been inked by the founders of the Hidden Ones, in fact. But their names are unknown to us. Lost to history. A deliberate choice on their part, I think. I'm hoping these documents shed some light on that mystery. I could not say. They're written in a language I do not understand. You know, the black market merchant Reda has an old piece of writing from the same era as the Codex pages you found. Speak with him if you are curious to see it. Salutations! Reda, Hytham says you have an old piece of writing from the early Hidden Ones. Oh, that old scrap? Yes. It's just a short letter from one hidden one to another. One of my rarest artifacts. How did it find its way to you? A friend gave it to me for safekeeping. Bayek was his name. Egyptian fellow. Very kind. Haven't seen him in a long time. A very long time. Anyway, the letter is written in Demotic, so it may not mean much to you. But you're free to have a look. A warning, my beloved. I have heard numerous tales now of a secret codex circulating among the acolytes of our bureaus, both within and without the Empire of Augustus, called the Magus Codex. It names you directly as one of the founders of the Hidden Ones. Apart from putting your life in danger, it flies in the face of what we have tried to achieve with our brotherhood. We are justice seekers who shun the light of praise for our good works, and who must live in the shadows of our triumphs. Should you see any pages of this Codex, I advise you to destroy them. Keep the dream of our Hidden Ones alive. Now, oh, I am not so naive to think this will be a simple task. Few men and women are suited to keeping such secrets for so long. And it may be that we will fail in the end, but we will have failed in the name of righteousness. Take care, my love. My Iset. My Northern Star. Even in my waning years, I am ever your Osiris. Let our Horus live on beyond us. I think of you often, my jewel. At sunrise and twilight. At new moon and full, when the rain falls and the breath of a moon rides across my neck. I remember you kissing me. Just there, and I will take that feeling to my tomb. Between you and me, Aver, always thought you'd be a good child. About you and Bridget, when do you wish to be wed? The sooner I can make her my wife, the happier I will be. But we are fine to wait until everything has settled here. Enough waiting. Cool your forge and cover your anvil. 
Let's get you married. Wonderful. Shall we gather everyone? Gather your wife and your courage. I will bring the people together. I am honored to stand before you, Gunner, Bridget, on this bountiful day, to celebrate the strength of your bond and to see you wed. I am in witness of a love that inspires and empowers. I invite you now to speak your vows. To you, my darling Bridget, I offer this blade forged in flames that burn as brightly as my heart does for you. A blade as sharp as your wit, as glinting as your beauty. May it sing through the air as sweetly as your voice meets my ears. Dio, see you did carry to Ghana. To never am locust, but if it's all a heat of tea and hurried. And I, you, I give you my sword and my promise that I will stand at your side forever. Heed for the prodigy of future and heen, and the sword tawaloch and hope, a premonition. And the mount of scrying a foresight, para toivi a sweeping adventure meeting tea. Your enoid will demarash. A dean as strong, a buratiki. A quell as he fears, but Kalon and head van derati. Such poetry, oh dear. You make me cry, my love. Let his head van Evan Gillen, Trebowid and beyond. I offer you this ring. And take yours in kind. I will wear it with pride and honor, warmed by the love of so perfect a lady. And I quisk of a Valkalon, adoration a fee than Bith. This is the greatest day of my life. Embrace me, my love. <laughs> With our couple now bonded in matrimony, now we drink. <laughs> Volka, I want to thank you for all you've done for me. My visions have lessened of late, and I... Well, I find it hard to explain how different I feel. Grounded. Unified. At peace. That is good to hear, Eivor. Very good to hear. What do you think of all this? Little dull, in my view. I think it was nice. I liked the part where they gave each other... It is a strange feeling, brother. Weddings are the beginning of something, but this feels like something of an end. The first happy union in our home. We have matured into something greater. So yes, a beginning and an end, I think. Gunner, you old trout. You're a married man. Never thought I would see the day. Nor did I. And not for lack of trying. Bridget, I gift you a formal welcome to our clan and our family. You are a fine addition to Gunnar's life and to ours. Dear Javier, I couldn't be more happy to Boma. Hope you never see wash in the case me sure that he is. Yes, of course. I, uh, as I say, it is wonderful to have you. And how are the marriage customs in your country, Itham? Something like this? Like this, in all the most important ways. There are smiles, cheers, and warm embraces. 
All that is needed, I think. You've been among us for quite some time, Redder. Are you ready to settle? Make a home here? For a year or two, perhaps. But I am not the settling kind. I am a wanderer. Always searching, never finding. Maybe one day. Alvis, I'm surprised you did not serenade the bride and groom with a verse or two. Oh, I wished to, I did. But all that came to me were insults and jibes. Another time, I think. Randri, saw you looking a little lonely. Thought I might come and join you. How nice. Are you enjoying yourself? I am. I never thought I would see gruff old Gunner so enraptured by a woman. Enraptured by anything, for that matter. He's a hard one to read, but I am pleased for him, and for this day of rest and respite. After everything, a few days of feasting will do the people some good. They need this. They do. Will you walk with me? Anywhere. Lead on. Something has been on my mind for some time. I am no seer, but I foresaw this day long ago. Not Gunnar's marriage, but our situation. Our success. How do you mean, our success? I mean to say that I saw our settlement flourishing, through our victories in war and in diplomacy. And from the day we set out from Norway, I knew that you would make a fitter leader than Sigurd. It was never in his character to lead. It was always within yours. I see. Do you? You might have warned me. You would not have listened. Fair. I do hope you see it now, in all that you have done for us. Randvi, you and the people here have done more for me than I could ever repay. I am honored by your faith in me, and your confidence. As I am honored by your love. And I by yours. Eivor, I want you to know that Sigurd and I are... We are severing the bonds of our marriage. We share a love that is steadfast, and I have faith it will forever be so, but my heart is yours. That much he knows. And I believe he is happy for us. Are you sure? Sigurd's desires are bigger than any man or woman can offer. He longs for something more, something only he can find. All he wants is far, far away. All I need is right here. Shall we find our way back to the wedding? Bridget might give another speech. We must not miss that. About that? I have not understood a single word of her since Gloucestershire. Really? I find she speaks beautifully. With poetry, even. Are you kidding? Am I? Come, we should go.
Well, in Hall of Kings, on ocean steed, my words gain wings. Oh, then speed I forth will bring for noble deeds, thine honor sing. The brave man slain, Valkyrie wakes, reward for strain to Valhurtle take. Then horns resounds the mighty hall For those who fight, for those who fall For those who fight, for those who fall Warlord weaves his web of fear Each man gets his fated share A blood-red surge, the warrior shield Raven scan the battlefield. Raven scan the battlefield. The beaten blaze, no trail of red. Clothing gaze upon the dead. And horns resounds the mighty horn. For those who fight and those who fall. For those who fight and those who fall. May horns resound the mighty hall For we who fight, for we who fall Dark is the shadow throne And disorder of the land dethroned Plans tangle as they go down A stubborn monarch's head uncrowned Fiercely eyed and flaming pride Merciless men are called to stride With fire in heart rode the warrior forth To redden the roads of Repton the king's god struck by shame. Loss has robbed reputed name. No matter what our hero choose, I fear that there is none to lose. Award him life or incite the kill. His days remain few numbered still. To your friend, be a friend. Gifts you return with Laughter met with laughter, wisely and willing. Treason repaid with treachery. No man should trust the corpse upon the battlefield. The good seeing seers, the strong will thrall. An early sown field should no man 
Have you heard 